interesting graphic that basically shows what a customer kind of flowchart looks like today. So if we look here where it starts at attracting strangers, and, and I put strangers there because they really are strangers to your brand. Um, and the first thing that uh, like good marketers do is educate, right? And so you educate people on not so much on the, the pros and cons of what you have or the benefits of your product, the benefits of your service, but rather educating people on why they should go with you, what this will do for your life. Um, if you look at like, I think it was uh, the TiVo example, right? So like TiVo ultimately failed, even though they were the first DVR product, but they just didn't come out and say, hey, our product will allow you to, you know, turn back, uh, you know, pause and record uh, live shows and be able to, you know, go back and watch what you do. Like it didn't actually say that. It came out and said like, we are a digital video recording product. And then the next guy, Time Warner came out and said, oh, we have one that is cheaper or we have one that also does what TiVo does. They didn't really have a good different, differentiator in the messaging and many people say that's why they ultimately um, failed. So after you educate people, you engage them, you convert them into leads, leads become customers, which I'll, I'll dive into in a second. And then I think a really important part is actually this piece here. The delight piece is like what you don't realize happens under the scenes with these brands is they turn you into marketers and kind of advocates of the brand itself and now you're the one selling it, right? So somebody sees you with the Mac, then they buy it, they wanna buy into you know, your culture and so ultimately the biggest promoters now are marketers of a brand are the customers themselves. The evangelists um, sometimes. The evangelist uh, of the brand is the final <laughs> piece that people say is actually the strongest piece of the brand. Um, and there's been a huge uproar of that with social, of course. It's just easy to become, you know, an evangelist or an influencer these days. Whether it's valid or not, there's, there's a lot of buzz around that and how it actually translates into brands selling, you know, products or services. But the people who ultimately promote your brand become your biggest kind of asset as marketers. And then I always say, you know, the analyzing, measuring, reporting, and then having that go full circle and affecting, you know, what you do again on the, on the forward part of this is probably the most critical. So the ability now to analyze, measure, and really determine if this whole kind of loop here is actually profitable, it, you could do that in a super easy fashion. How about, you, you say delight into promoters. <clears throat> that would also uh, cover referrals, correct? Oh yeah, so that's part of the, the evangelist, right? So yeah. many businesses thrive off referrals, right? And sometimes I talk to businesses, uh, they tell me 30, 40, 50% of their revenue comes from referrals. I think that's a little dangerous, yeah. but nonetheless, those, if those referrals are good, they act as a machine that generates revenue for the business. Yeah, uh, because like you mentioned, you start off with the acquisition, <coughs> customer acquisition. If you right. try to acquire a new customer, the cost of doing that is so high as compared to if you delight your customer, that's and right. then they just exponentially your kind of... Yeah, great point. I would say, to put some numbers around it, it's yeah. about three times yeah. the cost. 3x to bring in a new customer versus having right. uh, one promote. Keeping the same one, or even keeping the same one. Right, but, but to, yeah, to what was your name? Siddharth. Siddharth. To, to, Siddharth. To, his, to his point, I think that it's, it's way more expensive to do new customer acquisition versus yeah. retention and promotion. Oh, yeah, retention is what I was mentioning. Sure. Yeah. So, yeah, it's all, it's all around the same thing. And brands look at that, specifically e-commerce, yeah. right? To get somebody to buy the product first is about three times the cost, and most e-commerce brands take into consideration that that'll probably be a loss. Yeah. And so you have to have, have to. the product actually be a good product and have people start to share it with others. Sure. And if you look at the big brands that are doing well with that now, which I think is uh, in the next slide, um, Away Luggage, if you guys are familiar uh, with Away out of New York, I know the girls well, like, they say they lose money selling the first luggage, but, but they're, um, uh, their retention rate into second purchase is 25%, which is huge. huge. And then their uh, share share program through social generates 40% of the revenue at this point. And that's where I think the lifetime value of the customer also <clears throat> comes in, right? Correct. Because you're making loss on the first one and then... That's right. You assume a loss and then you make it up. Um, in, you know, it's all a numbers game, but you end up making it up and being profitable. It's so the lifetime value of the customer. Correct. So the total amount of revenue that they'll give you over, you know, you know over the lifetime, basically. So it's interesting, it's like, how does this uh, affect us as marketers? And, and the, the very simple statement is like, marketers now need to provide like full funnel engagements with customers, meaning from that initial attraction all the way through promotion and the evangelist role. Like, if you're not doing that, 
many brands uh, are failing. I can, I can give some examples of that, but we'll, we'll, I'll give some examples of brands that are doing that well. 